And let's just thank the Lord and thank the team. Thank you, guys. We'll be doing some more. We'll be doing some more worship in a, in a little while. Could you turn to somebody and say something, just one thing that comes to mind that you are thankful for? Come on. What are you thankful for this, uh, this time? Well done. My challenge now is to stop you. You've got so much to be thankful for. Are you telling everybody? So, good morning, everybody. It's great to be here and um, quite a different format to usual. Not quite sure where to turn, but I think if I turn that way, basically, you can see my face better. Um, just very quickly, um, just to say that next week is the restart of our Freedom Centre campus, as well as the, uh, the campus that happens up here at Holia, and uh, so that restarts next Sunday. And, um, and also just to say that uh, David Hulebeck, where's David, young David Hulebeck, is he? Yes, yeah, standing on the back here. Stand up, David. David's off to uh, Manchester um, uh, to study, <laughs> study about clocks. See, last Sunday, you know, you'll be back again, I know that, but actually last Sunday, this, uh, this term now, um, and he's going to study uh, about clocks and clock making and so on. You may have seen a snippet on the, on the telly uh, sometime, but there's actually a feature. Channel TV was so impressed, they come back. So look out. What date is it? 2nd of January. Look out for Channel TV, 2nd of January. You see David. Uh, amazing. We're going to pray for him in a moment. Also, uh, David's granddad is named David, and Trevor just told me this morning that David, of David and Jean Hulebeck, who you will know, David's in hospital at this time, and I'd like us to pray as a church for David and Jean and the whole family. And, um, and just to welcome you here also, if you're here for the first time, and we do welcome you here this morning. Um, so let's just stand, let's just pray together. Let's just hold our hands towards David. Let's think about his granddad, David. Father, we just thank you for young David here. Thank you for the gift that you've given him uh, relating to his interest in clocks and the way they work and uh, just amazing, the different gifts you give to people. And Father, may you really uh, know your presence with him, keep him safe, and Father, may he find a church family up there that he's going to really enjoy being part of. And Lord, we just look forward to him coming back and sharing what you're doing in his life. And Father, in that we just also remember David uh, Hulbeck Sr., and, uh, and Jean and the whole family. Father, we just pray for David now for your touch upon him. May he know your presence. As we've sung about this morning, may he know a sense of your presence and peace with him at this time. And that for Jean and, as well and the whole Hulebeck family. Lord, we just pray for your sense of your love and presence to be revealed to them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to take a seat then. Thank you. So my topic this morning is gratitude or thankfulness, and um, I'll just quickly run over the last year's what we've shared. Not everything, you'll be glad to know, I'm not going to share every preach, but actually, this isn't all inclusive, but in February, uh, we had the theme of the beating heart, I think it was Tim that shared that. Easter period, I shared on that Jesus as the coming king, the risen king, and the ascended king, and also uh, Adam sh spoke uh, on Good Friday, an amazing word on the cross and what uh, Jesus achieved there. In the summer months, we looked at knowing and experiencing the presence of God. And in September, the series was called Body Beautiful. And uh, we looked at the, the church in unity and the use of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, um, the operation of those gifts in love under the headship of Jesus. And we continue to look at our partnership with God and with one another as people. And then in November, we started what was called, or Tim has coined the phrase, ancient roots, which actually speaks about the creeds and the apostolic creed in particular. And we looked at the, uh, the first line of that about the Father or the fatherhood of God and the creation as well, or the creator of God. And uh, during December now, this has been all about thank you, God. Thank you. And uh, this is where this time I'm just saying about thankfulness or gratitude for God the Father sending Jesus the Son to us. And we need to have a continual attitude of gratitude. You've heard that phrase before, haven't you? Having an attitude of gratitude. As we look back in thankfulness, you can look back over this last year, 
or look back in beyond that year and be thankful. And we appreciate all that we have at present. So sometimes we can always look back. You know, remember the good old days, I used to say years ago, about the good old days. But actually, there's good days now as well. And there's exciting days ahead. And that's the tremendous thing, that knowing that God is with you, we can look back, we can look to now, and we can look forward in anticipation of what God is going to do in the year ahead and in the days ahead. The thing is, we can look forward because God has a destiny and a purpose for all our lives. Isn't that amazing? That God indwells us, He's Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God says that about us. Jesus said, I'm with you always. In Ephesians 2.10, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it says, we are God's workmanship. We are God's poem. We are God's creation. And he goes on to say this, uh, and he has good works planned in advance for us to do. We are not a, a rudderless ship. We are not as individuals just swept along by the tides or the waves. God has a purpose, and he, has, he is our rudder in our life. He's the one who's guiding us into all that he has prepared for us. And the amazing thing is that we have a final destination where we will see him and we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he really is. So we look back and we are thankful. We look to now and we are thankful. And we look forward in anticipation and we are thankful. So the question was, and I already asked you this, what are you thankful for this morning? Tim Bond asked this at a couple of our meetings. For those who were there down Freedom Center on the 16th of December, he asked the children, what are you thankful for? On Christmas invitation morning a week ago, he asked the same question. And to get the children forward, he had all those Haribos. Did you see how many? The numbers increased times six once he offered the Haribos for those who came forward. But actually, the responses of the children uh, were, were relating to relationship. Have you notice that? So yes, some said they like food, they like this, they like that. The, a, a significant number, we're talking about family members, how grateful they are, for, in particular for parents, for brothers, and for sisters. You know, and we are all a gift of God to one another. Jen and I put a, a message out. I want to say this about this church. I love this church because I love the people in this church. And we, we put this out. We would like to say how much we love and appreciate you all. We put this out on Facebook, Church Facebook, and Church Suite how much we love and appreciate you all who are part of our Freedom Church family. In our gatherings, we look around with such gratitude for you all and the privilege of being involved with such a wonderful group of people. That's my gratitude this morning. That's one of my gratitudes. Another gratitude, as the children have said, was about family. Now, a number of you will know that uh, during 2017 was not a good year for us. We lost uh, a grandchild at the age of two days to... Our youngest, our youngest daughter had a baby, Juno, and died after two days. And, and, and it, it was through medical negligence, which was admitted to and so on. It was such a difficult year. But even in those difficult times, in the pain of all that, God was pulling us closer into intimacy with him. I mean, I said I'd been praying for revival for many years, but actually I sensed a personal revival in that time, in that time of pain of just knowing God is there and promises to be there. Where else can we go to? He has the words of eternal life. We can only go to him. And I want to show you that this last year, that was 2017, this last year, we got a photo, I got a photo of our grandchildren there. We can put it up. We got it. There's our grandchildren. I'm so grateful for our own kids. I'm so grateful for our little baby Mila is in the middle who was born this last year. She's now just over six months old. And, uh, and to Esther, so she's had a baby since. So we saw her, and there's Esther with a baby. And boy, even in the pain, and all the pain, we just are so, you know, got so filled with joy of this last year. That's a real special uh, time for us. She was four months old then. So there can be pain in the journey in life. And, um, and always there's an opportunity to be, to be thankful to God, even during difficult times. If we Look at all the blessings that God has for us. Jesus said, I never leave you, not forsake you. You know what? On the cross, I thought about this, this word forsake. He said, Lord, you know, Father, why do you forsake me? Yeah? In fact, in a way, he sent, because of the separation due to the sin, all our sin that fell upon him, he felt he was forsaken. But actually, 
He was forsaken that we would not be forsaken. He, we are not forsaken. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And at the cross, Jesus took it all for us. And so we are so grateful to him this morning. And as I think about the cross, I'm just going to ask Jen. Jen, can you manage to come up here? I managed to get up once. I was amazed I got managed up to get up twice. <laughs> Shall I help you up here? There we go. We. So if you want to share something. Okay, thanks. I think John was convinced my skirt was too tight <laughs> to get up. There you go, I'm here. Um, well, just to say, really, I'm thankful for Christmas. We've all had a lovely time, probably with our families, and lots of turkey, lots of things to eat. It's been a wonderful time, and I love Christmas. I am, though, a little bit disappointed that Christmas seems to be more and more without Jesus, and Jesus and the cross is the real reason for Christmas. That's why we celebrate. And, you know, there are more and more blown-up snowmen and Rolf and Rudolph and, and, and everything else that we see lit up on each of the houses. Well, on, I think it was a couple of days before Christmas, we were driving along the avenue from town, and I looked up, and on one of the houses... There were two Christmas trees lit up on their balcony, and there was a big cross. And I said to John, wow, John, look at that. They've actually put up a cross, you know. And for me, you know, I love all the other stuff, but Jesus is the reason, you know, that we, that we worship at Christmas. And um, so I said to John, I said, oh, wouldn't it be good if we had a, a cross outside our house, you know, and if Christians had a cross up, lit up, instead of all the other stuff that we have, or as with the other stuff we have. So lo and behold, Christmas Eve, most people are stuffing their turkey, and maybe icing the cake, doing all the things you do at Christmas. What was John doing? Now, he loves DIY. It's his favorite thing. He was making a cross. And our cross was quite big. I thought we were competing with St. Matthew's there, <laughs> round the corner. So he'd made this cross, and then, you know, Hannah and I sort of managed to get the lights on it and get it up on our balcony. And there it has been lit, morning and night, all over Christmas. So, you know, it's a little thing, isn't it? But it is, you know, what Christmas is all about. And I was in Benny's. The day before yesterday, and a, a student who I used to teach, she was there with her little girl, and uh, she was saying, oh, where do you live? I said, oh, I live in the avenue. She said, oh, is yours, yours the house with the cross? I said, well, actually, yes, because we are Christians, we feel it should be about Jesus and the cross, which is what Christmas is about. So, yeah, we're the house with the cross. Where do you live? You know, and, and on went the conversation. So I did have one opportunity already, and I hope many people who drive down the avenue have a look, see our cross up there. And maybe next year, John's open to DIY orders. <laughs> anyway, so yes, yeah. it is indeed all about Jesus. It's Christmas. I just want to finish by reading this scripture. The angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, and he said of Mary, She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. So yes, Christmas is about trees, cake, turkey, all the things I love. I've probably got more baubles on my tree than most people. However, primarily it is about Jesus and what he has done. He has saved me, and I am so thankful. And he is with me. He is God with me every day, all day, 24 hours a day. And I am so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And just on the back of what Jen said, if you do want a cross, give me more notice than Christmas Eve, all right? 
I only had two days' notice, but I managed to get, you know, it turned around. So, um, yeah, so it's all about thanks and, uh, and, and expressing that thanks to the cross. The cross is as relevant at Christmas, in fact, as we heard Jen read there, that's why Jesus came, to die on a cross for us. And the world wants to keep him as a baby in a manger. So anyway, it's about being always thankful. This scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Paul didn't say uh, give thanks for all circumstances, but in all circumstances, there's a difference, yeah? So even in the, you know, the difficulties of life, and John Jefferson shared on Christmas Eve about how, 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 how Mary and how Jesus and the life of those people and the others as well as Christians in the New Testament, how they went through difficult times and shared testimony himself. But actually to know the presence of God in all circumstances, you can give thanks to him for being there. We can be thankful so for so many things. It's thankful it's for everything in, in Ephesians 5. It says this, sing and make music in your heart, O Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting, isn't it? It's about sing and make music in your heart. That's what we do when we listen to s songs on your podcasts or whatever you've got, um, you know, your, uh, your iPads and different things. And also in coming together, especially on Sunday as a gathering of people, we sing and make music in our heart, always giving thanks to God, our Father, for everything. And it goes on in, in the Colossians, it says this, and whatever you do, no, let me go back a little bit. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Father, we just thank you. we got so much to be grateful for. We've shared with one another this morning. And Lord, we've shared today about Jesus. And Father, I just pray if there's anybody here today who hasn't fully understood that they could be grateful to you for Jesus coming into their life. Lord, I just pray by your Holy Spirit, you just touch them now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 John.